Married at First Sight, Season 16, Episode 3,479. <sighs> what is happening with this show? How did we get here? This episode was like they made the cast play rock, paper, scissors, and whoever lost their round got thrown in a scene together. It was all over the place and nowhere at the same time. While I don't mind the idea of having an episode that follows the cast after decision day, having the men meet up at a park to play frisbee then sit around and talk about their feelings, yeah, that's pretty much what single guys do on a regular basis, right? And how was this any different from the last 4,223 episodes this season? Hi, I'm Tamara, and this is Tamara Lynette Tells. Let's get into this filler episode. They kept trying to press the narrative that everyone is single now and should be out looking for relationships. Well, everyone except Pepper Cowell, AKA Nicole and Chris, that is. Watching them was like watching someone sweep the floors at Costco. It took forever, and in the end, it still looked the same. They went to a wedding, but we only saw them in the car on the way to the wedding. They went to a gym and worked out together. They played catch in the park. There were so many park scenes in this episode. I'm sure even soccer moms were like, ain't nobody trying to be at the park that much. You know what? Let's count how many times the cast went to the park in this episode. Yeah, that's how dull this episode was. I'm going to keep track of the park scenes. So that was number one. What Pepper Cow's dad did was kind of cute, though. He named his chickens and roosters after the entire cast. Maybe this episode would have been more entertaining if they sent the cast to his farm to meet their doppelganger and hang out with Pepper Cow's dad. So really the only thing we learned about these two is that Pepper Cow likes to spend her money on silliness. She wanted to buy a giant magnifying glass plus an $1,800 gold chair for a house with three dogs and a husband who has divorce in his eyes. They showed Gina having the epitome of small talk with her coworker. I have to travel here to go do hair and I have to travel over there to teach a class about hair. Okay, bye. Chuck Norris, a.k.a. Clint, met up with Dom. They tried to make it look like they were meeting up to flirt, but they were just chit-chatting. Oh, and look at where they met. At a park. That's number two. So they talked about the possibility of Gina and Mac going on a date together. They didn't seem to give a damn, and neither did I. Dom didn't seem to think that Mac would be good enough for Gina because Gina has her stuff together. Hey, as long as he's willing to listen to her carry on and on about her salon, they'll be all right. But Chuck said something interesting. He said Mac is more low key than him, which Gina should like because she's used to being the center of attention. But Chuck believes that he stole the spotlight from Gina. I wonder how much of that is true because Gina seems kind of reserved to me. Reserved, but a good sport willing to try new things. I've never gotten the life of the party vibe from her. But then again, they edit the heck out of these shows. So there's that. Then Dom claimed she's looking for the courage to send Gil from season 13 a message. Chuck said he didn't know who Gil was because he never watched the show. Say what now? You never watched the show? You didn't do your research before agreeing to sign your life away for eight weeks? That sounds like what Americans do on 90 Day Fiance. Whenever they go to their lover's country, they experience complete culture shock because they never bother to Google the country. Then all we hear is them whining, I'm an American. I know my rights. I'm an American. I don't have to do that. Bitch, you're in Kastavistan right now. You better wipe his mama's feet with that sacred cloth and shave his daddy's back hairs and buy them a bull's tongue dipped in gold before the local army arrests your butt. Some of these countries don't play. But I digress. Anyway, having Dom go out with Gil is like what they did with Chris from season 14. His season ended early for him, so they dusted off Olivia from season 11 and had them go out on a fake date. And this is just another fake storyline. Gil lives out of state. Dom made it crystal clear that she's not interested in anyone who's not interested in making friends with her mama or living in Nashville forever. Besides, Gil got so many pairs of panties thrown at his forehead after being on this show, he ain't checking for Dom. But obviously these folks enjoy being on TV, so he'll go out with her. Jasmine and Kirsten hung out. Jasmine was allegedly in the market for an apartment, so Kirsten went with her to check out a place. 
Afterwards, they chatted and Jasmine and her newfound confidence were on fire. When she was talking about whoever was going to be her next boyfriend, she said, if you ain't got that knee dirty in a year, then I'm done. If you don't know, then I don't need you to know. My clock is ticking. Now, I have to admit, when I first heard her make that knee dirty reference, my mind literally went south in the gutter. I thought she was talking about him getting on his knees to lick her sugar bowl. Because I was thinking she was bitter about not having sex in her marriage. But that doesn't sound like Jasmine or something she would say. That sounds more like something I would say, to be honest. So later I realized she was talking about getting on his knee to propose. So shows where my mind was at. Anyway, Jasmine said she's talking to a guy she knew in college. And Kirsten said she just wanted to focus on herself. And Jasmine was like, well, part of focusing on yourself is dating again. She was kind of pressuring Kirsten to get back on the dating scene. These producers were really pushing this cast to start dating again. I mean, Decision Day was only like a week and a half ago. They are all still married. And contractually, they can't even apply for a divorce until after the season is done airing. Like, let them take a break to think about things and at least file for divorce before you push them back on Bumble or OK Cupid. Production just wants to be able to film their fake dates. But I digress. They sent Kirsten to a career coach who was acting more like a therapist. I would have preferred to see her chat with one of the experts who really knew her than this random lady. Orgy, a.k.a. Eris and Mac met up. Guess where? At a park. That's number three. So Mac's story about being in Nashville when he really lives in Michigan is so shady. I mean, after they picked him to get married, he made it obvious that he was living in a temporary place in Nashville in order to be on the show. When he and Dom talked about where he wanted to live permanently, he wouldn't commit to staying in Nashville. Now, for some odd reason, they are going out of their way to try to convince us that that's not true. Even though he's supposed to have a successful cannabis business, one where he could provide for himself and a wife, I remember Pastor Cal asking him that question before he got married. He now claims he was applying for jobs and just happened to get one back in Michigan. If he wanted to settle down in Nashville, why would he look for a job in Flint, Michigan? Yeah, I want to remain here in Los Angeles, so I'm looking for jobs that require me to move to Cedar Key, Florida. Then he tried to drive home the fact that he was planning to stay in Nashville by saying he just rented a house in Nashville. If you just rented a house, why were you and your friend looking for a house to rent the other day? Oh, and by the way, I checked his LinkedIn and it lists his cannabis company as his full-time job. So Shaq wasn't really in this episode. He had to go to Louisiana because his grandmother passed away. She was at his wedding. Listening to him talk about her was really sweet. I don't know how he held it together during that segment. And it was nice to hear that Kirsten said she checked in on him. I wonder if there's just a little part of him that was wishing he said yes on decision day so he could have had Kirsten there with him for support because we know how he likes his support. In any case, this is very sad news about his grandma. May she rest in love. So they had Chuck and Orgy hang out with some of Chuck's friends. Even though they were outside, it wasn't officially a park, so I won't count it. Anywho, they were talking, but not really saying anything. Marriage isn't easy, and Orgy said he learned how to stick around and have hard conversations rather than just disappearing for a few days until things blow over. With this kind of track record, why would you sign up to be married other than just to be on TV? Then I noticed, while they were having a conversation, one sentence it was sunny outside then they cut over to the next sentence and it was dark i think the editors were probably struggling to find footage that was interesting and just finally said f it i'm going to string together these two conversations that happened three hours apart from each other so jasmine went on her little date and she claimed she wanted to keep his identity private so she called him friend boy then they proceeded to treat him like he was in the witness protection program and only showed us his back wrist elbow and chin I wonder what that was really about. I wouldn't be surprised if that was one of her exes or one of her friend's husbands doing her a favor. She didn't seem to be trying to win him over because she committed the ultimate sin on a first date. She rambled on comparing her date to Orgy. The way I feel with you is much better than when I was in my marriage. You make me feel more confident being here with you than when I was with him. Oh, and I guess I need to get this question out of the way. Are you attracted to me? And he was like, that hurts my feelings. Yes, I find you attractive. 
Then she got all super bashful and embarrassed and couldn't even look the man in the face. Okay, Miss Beauty Queen, acting like you've never been told you're beautiful. Girl, you do not need to date right now. You need to make you a plate and sit down somewhere until you get over the trauma of being married to Orgy. But whoever's husband this was that she was out with kissed her, so somebody is going to have some explaining to do when he gets home. So then it was Chuck's turn to go on a fake date, and guess where they went? A park. That's number four. He claims his friend reached out to him to ask him if he wanted to be set up. I doubt that's what really happened, but that's what they want us to believe, so let's roll with it. They were playing disc golf. Remember Chris from season 14 was the reigning disc golf champion of the Mojave Desert or wherever? He would have loved this moment. Anyway, when they sat down and Chuck told her that he got married at first sight, she was all surprised. Come on now, this wasn't a dating ambush. They made you sign the married at first sight paperwork before you were allowed to be on the show, woman. So he asked her what one of her deal breakers is, and she said redheads. <laughs> Check, please. This felt like a setup to me. First of all, she's a redhead. Second, her excuse for not wanting to date one was lame at best. She said it's because they get confused for being related. She's only dated one redhead and people thought they were related, so she doesn't want to date any more redheads anymore. Was this a blind date? You mean to tell me that you didn't ask your friend for a picture, his Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, or anything? Poor Chuck can't catch a break on this show. To the conventional cam, he's like, red is not a person, it's a color. Honestly, they could have cut this entire scene. Watching one of the few people who has redeeming qualities on this show get rejected was not entertaining. Now, if this was Orgy getting rejected at a park after playing disc golf because he didn't smile enough or she didn't find him attractive or whatever, I'm here for it all day. Gina and Mac. These two finally had their little date. Some class on how to make cafe lattes. And if you didn't catch this episode and were wondering how on earth were they able to make watching people prepare a cup of coffee interesting? Mm-mm, they weren't. Anyway, they sat down afterwards and Gina complimented Mac on his swag. That's what you consider swag? A basic sweater and pants outfit? Girl, you need to get out more. So they talked about noticing each other right away when they met up at the airport for the honeymoon. He was more attracted to Gina than Dom. And based on some of the cast comments on a few after parties, everyone seemed to have noticed that these two were attracted to each other. Anyway, he talked about all of those businesses that he owned. He had a contracting company, then he did lawn care, then he got into cannabis, and at some point woodworking. But he's been in the cannabis business for 12 years. So he finally told her that he's moving back to Michigan for his mystery job and he's leaving this Sunday. Really? I suspect that he moved back to Michigan right after he left the show and they flew him in for a week or two to film or something. In any case, Gina was all for it and says she's open to long distance, wants to continue talking to him to see where things go. Okay. I'm just going to say this. Watching them on this date was painfully boring. I kept getting up to piddle around my place and had to keep rewinding it to get through it. In other words, I suffered through it so you didn't have to. You're welcome. So they had the ladies go pick flowers. Now, this place probably wasn't called a park, but it was outside a wide open space with a lot of flowers and grass. So I'm calling it a park and that makes park number six. Gina couldn't make it to their little get together because she was in Canada. Jasmine said she got a new apartment. Good for her, moving out of her parents' house. Meanwhile, Dom was excited because she's gonna have a FaceTime chat with Gil. I love that to the confessional cam, Pepper Cow called her out. She said Gil was out of state in Houston, but that was the one big sticking point for Dom with Mac that he has no roots in Nashville and that he was just here to try out for the show. Thank you. These poor producers are trying so hard to give us some drama, but they are failing miserably. These storylines are so flimsy, they're just stuck together with spit. So anyway, while the ladies were off picking flowers, the men were playing frisbee and tossing around a football. One guess where they were. That's right, at park number seven. That's seven park scenes in a span of a few days. Anyway, they had Chuck and Orgy bring Gina and Jasmine's dogs to the park, but they didn't tell Chris to bring his badass dogs, or at least stay with the theme and bring Pepper Cow's dog. So while Orgy was telling the guys that he hopes to be able to hang out with Jasmine's dog, Duchess again, when talking to the ladies, Jasmine seemed a little salty about him having her dog. 
she said it's just a one-time thing and it won't be happening again. In other words, the only reason Orgy has my dog is because producers asked me to for their big frisbee in the park finale. Anyway, when Dom found out that Mac was moving back to Michigan, she was sarcastic as hell. To the confessional cam, she said, I am in such shock right now that Mac is moving back to Michigan. Who knew? Girl, this comment would have hit different if you weren't chasing after Gil, who's 778 miles away from you in Houston. Meanwhile, Kirsten's still thinking about decision day. She said her only question for Shaq was, why the hell were you crying? Okay, she didn't say it like that, but that's how I interpreted it. On decision day, she did say that she has a hard time caring about or understanding other people's feelings. This may be one of those moments. Just because he said no doesn't mean he couldn't be sad and grieve the loss of the marriage he was hoping for at the beginning of the process. Or maybe he was upset because he was gonna miss her juicy booty. I mean, I'm not trying to say I have all the answers, but clearly he was grieving something. As for the man, of course, Orgy was the one who asked if anyone had sex since decision day, but Chuck chimed right in and said it was amazing after not having sex for two months. He was carrying on about it like he just got out of the pen. He's not dating the person that he had sex with, but he already knew her, and it was just about the sex. Hey, I'm not here to judge. Okay, well, clearly I am, but I ain't mad if she ain't mad. We already knew Orgy had someone on deck. He's like a crackhead who just got out of rehab that didn't get rid of his old friends, so he went right back to his old ways and hit them streets. Actually, I don't know how much he's been in them streets because he's still taping this show that apparently has no ending, but he did figure out a way to at least dip his toe in the crosswalk. So in a nutshell, that was the 89 scenes plus seven park rendezvous from this episode. The reunion episodes are not until the end of this month. By then, will anyone even care? They are already showing us what they're doing after decision day. Is this cast going to sit down at the reunion and just recap it all for us? I swear, if next week's episode isn't better than this one, I may do a Where Are They Now or some other Married at First Sight related story video instead. At this point, making these videos is like being on that Food Network show, Chopped, where they throw random ingredients at the chefs and they have to try to create a fabulous meal out of nothing. This show is like that. It's getting more and more random and boring. I need better material to work with. Well, that's all I got. Thanks for hanging out with me and I'll see you in my next video.